Hey guys, if you've been following us for a while, you know we're on the road full time and we've made the big decision to install 800 watts of solar on our camper. And we chose the Bougie RV solar system with their new 200 watt 9BB solar panels. We're gonna install four panels for a total of 800 watts. If you wanna see how to do this, then follow along. These new Bougie RV 200 watt 9BB solar panels are way more efficient than any other 200 watt panel and the reason is these bus bars here, this is what the 9BB stands for. There's more of them than a typical panel, allowing these monocrystalline panels to operate more efficiently. They're also smaller than its standard 200 watt panel due to the fact that there are more bus bars in here. So if you have less real estate that you need to mount these on or save weight, these are the route you wanna go. Here's what you'll need to complete this project. The total cost was $1,600, not including tools. I've included product links in the description below, so make sure to check those out. So we've weighed each item individually, including four solar panels and all the accessories, and we'll be adding 115 pounds to our rig. So the first step that you'll want to take is figure out your routing from the roof where your solar panels are down below to the floor level and then to your battery bank. And the best place to look is around your refrigerator because you've got a vent already for the fridge. In our last camper, we did our install going through the fridge vent. This time we opened it up and I'm trying to find the routing from around the fridge vent here to go concealed within the wall down below. And I'm looking to mount the controller in this area here. That way it's out of sight. And since we have a remote display with this unit, we can run our remote display anywhere we'd like on this side of the camper so that you can see the voltage and solar gain that you're getting throughout the day. So that way you won't have this obnoxious controller just sticking out in your space. So it's important to note that I did explore other areas of mounting the controller. Another spot that I looked was on the side of the microwave here. One reason I don't want to mount it here is I'm afraid that if I screw in through this wall, I may puncture something on the side of our refrigerator, which would be really bad. So I was just reading through the manual on the controller and you want to make sure that you have proper ventilation almost six inches above and below the controller to allow proper ventilation around the heat sink on the back side of it. I also just read that you need to have a circuit breaker or fuse in place between the controller and the panels, which was not provided. Okay, so I found some fuses. We have some spares that we keep with us all the time. And we have some 40 amp inline fuses that are red arc. And we use these in the truck for our red arc unit and solar panel. So we'll be installing these with the system. They're not included. One of them will go between the solar panels and the controller. And the other one will go between the controller and the batteries. You'll also need some ground wire and connections to ground out the controller as well. And then we are also including a battery shutoff isolator, and this will go between the solar panels and the controller to be able to shut the system off if we need to service it at any time and it's safe to touch the wiring. When I bought this shutoff switch, it included connections as well and heat shrink. And that's really handy because we'll still need connections to the battery terminals. Okay, I'm trying to investigate the best way to route our solar cables down because now we'll have to account for several fuses and a battery shutoff. And I'm thinking I may not have enough area to allow proper ventilation around the controller where I've been planning out in here. So we're gonna look at possibly if we have enough cable length, if we could mount it underneath our sink here that way it's more accessible we'll have the remote display and we'll be able to put it out wherever we want but that way too if we need to shut the solar off for any reason the battery shutoff valve or shut off would be a lot closer and more accessible rather than having to remove the drawer here to get access to it underneath my concern is i don't know if i have enough cable length i probably need to start laying out my solar panels that way I know for sure if I have enough cable to reach further in. It's easier to use the cardboard for planning your solar layout. Don't forget to thoroughly wash your roof prior to installation.
So what I'm wanting to do is have my cables go down right around in here. And I wanted to remove this, first of all, to be able to fix that foil tape that had fallen down, but also so that I can get my hands down in here and make sure that I can remove this section here and actually come down through the ceiling here. Well, you look at that, I actually fed it up out the hole. Our next step will be to drill the holes to send our cables through. This solar gland entry box is a Bougie RV brand purchased separately. I highly recommend it for secure waterproof routing through the roof. Once cables have been fed through and set in place, you can tighten down the round nut with rubber gasket for true waterproof routing. Before we get started, it's a good idea to lay out your conductor head and your uh, refrigerator vent to make sure that they'll work together and won't conflict once you go to seal it after the fact. So we're going to lay those out before we start drilling. Okay, now that we have our hole drilled through the main portion of the roof, if you just extend out your quarter inch bit. We should be able to at least punch through the ceiling here on the bottom side where we can feel it. And then we can just use a large flathead screwdriver to just kind of open it up a little bit more because this bit is not quite long enough to reach all the way down. If you have a sawzall, this would be a helpful portion here, but you just really want to make sure that the blade will not reach down and damage the top of your refrigerator. So I'm going to push down in here and You could just drill a couple of holes, kind of open it up a little bit. Just big enough to get our two cables through. Now, if you do plan to run all your panels in parallel, you would need to account for four cables to run down or use Y branches to branch them off before you run down through the roof. we get the vacuum out to clean this up just run your cables through and make sure both of them fit through the hole all the way okay looks like we're clearing it good and don't forget to feed it through here first Also helps to have two people for this part. So Stasha's downstairs. She's gonna go ahead and pull here in just a minute once I get a little bit of tape on here just to keep them together so they don't come apart. Okay, slowly start pulling. This is what you want to see. The electrical tape method worked. All right, you want to come down and tell me how much? Actually, pull out a couple feet. Heck yes, that's amazing. All right, why don't you hold there real quick? Okay, I want to make sure these cables can reach where I want to have the panels hit them. If you're doing solar at home, you have to buy something like this. It allows you to fish the wire so much easier. 
trust me, it's been a lifesaver. Wish we had it the first time we did solar uh, from day one. We were about halfway through our solar install on the first camper and realized we needed something other than wire hangers. thinking up here. To ensure we have enough cable length, it's now time to install the mounting feet to the panels and start laying them out. Okay, so we have our butyl tape on here. And I've put a little bit of insulation down in the hole. The next thing we're gonna do is get this in place. And we're gonna secure this before we tighten up the cords and everything else. So they're kind of loose still. And we'll just push this in place. It's a really tough putty. And then we'll secure it here in a second. Some of it will squeeze out, that's good. You're supposed to cover your screw holes with it. You just wanna get the tip just like that. We'll do this front one first. Should get a little bit of squeeze out like that lets you know that you got a good seal and our last screw here Okay, so last thing I gotta do is seal this back up here. I'm just gonna use some wood screws. We chose to replace our fridge vent because of a stripped access screw and UV damage. camper for the inverter yeah okay, maybe we could do another piece on this just to reinforce it maybe we can mount it on here and we could even pull our cabling through the back side so it won't even like clutter this area up we'll just kind of straight out the panel here and hit the on off fuse or on off switch and the fuse and then the controller so the more we've talked it through, it makes the most sense to mount it alongside the sink here below on the second shelf. That way we can come through the back side with our electrical and you won't see any of it from the front side except for where it connects to the fuses and controller. Now I've gone ahead and started to run my ground wire here and I've pulled my cable through. Back here you can see it straight across the back in the same wire loom with the other wires here. And I've got it pulled out to get ready to heat down. Now I've gone ahead and just stuck my wire fissure down through this hole. 
That way, when I start opening it up from the outside, I can just see where it is for reference. And in order to locate that, I went off of an existing window here. And I know with my tape measure across, it's about 30 inches to the center line of the drawers. So on the outside, I have a reference of where I can start backtracking back the 30 inches to find this hole. I have a feeling this might be right over the axle, so we may be coming down in kind of a difficult spot, but we'll go find out. gray expanding foam sealant that's bug repellent that we will be replacing this with and sealing it up with when we go back over it. This is our new neighbor Patrick Donnelly. Hey how you doing? <laughs> he's helping me out with a few things around the camper. Luckily he's got power tools and scrap wood and any miscellaneous things that we don't have with us. And Anything they need. It's been a great help. Oh yeah right there hold on I see it. Sweet. It's perfect. Thank you so much. Yep. Pull it up. And then put the and then do a second pull. And then, yeah, open up there, put the feed the camera from the front. And from the other end and pull it through. It might be. I'm gonna pull that through then I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't offer you knee pads? Nah, I wouldn't wear them anyway. <laughs> All right, most important part, don't forget the shrink wrap first. Twist it so it's round and thin. And go ahead and feed our connector on and crimp it. Blaster. BB50. Hopefully this will help. Usually it makes cutting a little bit easier.
to the propane, is that okay? All right, you want to make sure you wear gloves with this stuff because it is really hard to get it off. We're going to try to infill this hole so we can prevent any bugs from getting in. It'll expand quite a bit too, so. Do you need safety glasses? Probably. We're just hanging my sunglasses. Now we'll install the remote meter. I'm going to close these up.
We ran out of butyl tape and bought one-sided Gorilla waterproof patch and seal tape at Lowe's. Both can be used for self-sealing to prevent water intrusion and protect the panel feet from cutting into your roof while in transit. Yeah, it is. Okay, moment of truth. Once I turn this shut off dial here on, then we should have power from our solar panels to the controller here, and we'll be able to see it up on the remote meter as well. So here we go. There it is. What's the red light mean? I don't know. So our battery meter here was showing 13.2, and as soon as I turned the dial, it jumped up to 14.3. And it shows here by this line going across the screen from the solar panel, that it's currently gathering solar energy. It's showing our battery totally full, and that's the highest I've ever seen our voltage before. One thing we're gonna check out is that flashing red light. It might mean that it's indicated it's reading the solar panels in series, but I'm gonna read through the manual just to make sure. Red. Yeah, because red means it's vented lead acid. Okay. So it means that we've set the battery type to that. And I think this is turning yellow because it's going down because we're not charging to it. I turned the solar panels off. Right. So I'm going to turn them back on now. Just went up to 12.7 from 12.6, 13.0. Thirteen point one, sweet. Now it's solid red on the solar panels. Is that what we want? I think so. Okay. It must have been like reminding us that we didn't set the battery profile correctly. It's going up. Victory!
And just like that, we have 800 watts of solar installed on our RV in only four days. Can't believe it. If you have any questions on solar installation, sizing, whatnot, please post them in the comments below. We'd love to help you out. We'll be doing a full review on these Bougie RV solar panels, so stay tuned. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to follow along for more adventures.